Hello students, looking at current affairs for 26th May, this is actually current affairs covered from Sunday's paper and yesterday's paper too. So it's combination of 24, 25 and 26 May. The important headlines are listed below. We'll discuss them in detail. The first one, flight and health curbs cloud airline operations. So we saw Union Health Ministry announcing that travel would resume, domestic travel will resume from 25th May 2020, means air travel, rail travel as well as interstate bus travel. So now new guidelines have been issued for interstate travel and international arrivals. So it is said that only COVID-19 asymptomatic domestic passengers and international arrivals will be permitted. Means if you are not having any symptoms, you would be permitted to travel with the advice that you should still self-monitor your health for 14 days. But then the you know, health ministry has not given detailed in, uh, protocol and it has asked states and union territories to develop their own protocol with regard to quarantine and isolation as per the assessment. So this is resulting in confusion and uh, airlines have not been able to, you know, have connectivity provided because of delay in opening of air, airports by various states or restriction on the number of flights which states are putting now. So there is lack of clarity among airlines about destinations they could connect to and number of flights they can operate. So this has resulted in uh, the connectivity now being provided. You can see 532 flights actually flew on 25th May yesterday and 39,000 passengers were ferried over, over it. So these were domestic air travel which commenced after two months now and also it was seen that large number of travelers were left stranded because airlines were forced to cancel half the flights too just hours before takeoff due to poor coordination between center and states and also there was seen that it was seen that just 25 to 50 percent seats in the airlines were filled so it is also a sign of reluctance amongst passengers to travel in the times of covid 19. These was guidelines issued by Health Ministry for domestic and international travelers. For international travelers, they have been, uh, all passengers have to agree to pay 7 days of paid institutional quarantine followed by 7 days of home isolation. And a self-declaration form should be produced, a copy of it should be produced on to officials on arrival. And this is again 14 day home quarantine will be there, means 7 days institutional home quarantine is for all except you know, for specific reasons like uh, any distress or pregnancy or death in the family, etc. And use of Arogya Setu app is mandatory in such cases for international airlines travel. And for domestic travel, you can see on arrival, all asymptomatic passengers will be permitted to go home and they have to self-monitor their health for 14 days. And common guidelines for all, all travelers, all air travelers, you can see regarding wearing mask and having hygiene requirements followed is the next is testing up in states seeing massive return of migrants so states which are seeing massive return of migrants like Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal and Odisha are currently uh, you know having uh, steps being taken to step up COVID-19 testing capacity too so you can see India is among the top 10 hotspots of COVID-19 worldwide now. Approximately 6,000 cases were added, are added every 24 hours in the fourth phase of national lockdown. And now with migrants returning, the cases may rise. So there's a need for testing and these states need to increase their testing capacity. And for that purpose, an indigenous diagnostic test, which is used actually for testing, for detecting drug-resistant TB, tuberculosis. This test is called TRUNAT. So this has been validated for confirmatory detection of SARS-CoV-2 virus 2 by ICMR. So TrueNet testing will be used. Earlier it was used only as a screening test and ICMR insisted on having an RT-PCR test, reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction test to be done to confirm COVID-19. But now this will be used in these states to test migrant workers. So TrueNet is actually a test for e-gene as such and this is the gene common to both SARS virus as well as SARS-CoV which causes COVID-19 and states have been working with national tuberculosis and elimination program to deploy to TrueNAT machines for COVID-19 tests. So through this machine testing is done in such areas and districts where modern virology laboratory in private or public sector does not exist. Then 
So this is here you can see the states shown with number of public and private labs. Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu have the highest number of COV testing, COVID-19 testing labs in the country. Then comes Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh. And it's very low. You can see Ladakh has zero labs. Including here, you can see Chhattisgarh. And this is regarding how India has now got 6.03% of share of cases across the globe, COVID-19 cases. And USA leads with 22%, 23% share approximately of cases, COVID-19 cases, new cases coming up. So, you can see India comes fourth in that sense after US, Brazil and Russia. New cases being added. The next is UP releases skill map of migrants. So, Uttar Pradesh government has released its first skill map of migrant workers who return to the state during the lockdown. So, government said it will provide them employment in the state itself. UP government has will provide them employment as per their skills and experience and will constitute a migrant commission for the purpose. So, it is said so far 23 to 24 lakh migrant workers have returned to UP and largest set of these migrant workers are related to construction sector of around 1.52 lakh as such. And others who have registered are painters, carpenters, drivers, even around 12,000 are work, uh, linked to garment and tailoring sector. And Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has expressed his view saying that if garment hubs can be built in Bangladesh and Vietnam, then why not in UP? So this is the policy being initiated now. The next is deliberations on to end LAC tensions. So this is line of actual control as such between India and China. And deliberations are continuing on a daily basis between military commanders of India and China on the ground in addition to other channels of communication to resolve the situation along LAC. So this actually has uh, come up, the issue uh, broke out because of a uh, construction activity being undertaken by India. So a road branching from Darbuk Shiok Dalatbek Odi Road towards Galwan Nala which is a road of around 225 kilometers, this road branching has resulted in China raising objections and situation flaring up. And it has been told by multiple sources that China is not tenable because Galwan Nala region has never been a point of contention, is not a disputed site. And uh, this is actually then change in status quo by China and should not be acceptable to India. It violates all existing agreements between India and China. And also you should know in 2019, October 2019, Defence Minister uh, Rajnath Singh inaugurated a strategically important road in this region too. On the, uh, this was a bridge, strategically important bridge on Shiok River. So this is a bridge named Colonel Chewang Rinchen Situ. It's a 430 meter bridge built at an altitude of 14,650 meters by Border Road Organization. So, Border Road Organization is building various strategically important roads, strategic Indochina border roads. There are 61 such Indochina border roads being built by BRO. So, this has actually, this road construction has resulted in China raising objections and situation um, flaring up presently. Also in March 2019, even Parliamentary Standing Committee on Defense had expressed satisfaction that Border Road Organization had completed work on 75% of the construction work on this strategic Indochina border. So we will see the map here too, you can see. So here you can see uh, the flash points between India and China, the dark dame choke, uh, Pang, uh, so lake here, and in Himachal Pradesh also, Uttarakhand, and here in Arunachal Pradesh too. So India records around 300 transgressions by People, uh, by People's Liberation Army, that is the Chinese army every year. So, numbers have increased. In, in 2017, we had a face-off between India and China army to, on the, the issue of Toklam, which also involved Bhutan. And this, you can see, is Daulat Beg Oldi, which is close to India-China LAC. So this is Aksai Chen region, which is an area illegally occupied by China after the 1962 war in Jammu and Kashmir. 
the next is despite glut cut in fuel prices unlikely so union minister for petroleum and natural gas dharvendra pradhan has described the situation prevailing in the oil market presently as extraordinary and but he has ruled out any fuel price cuts in india despite the supply glut so the, it is seen that crude prices were reducing there was a, a war price crude war as such which was going on earlier price war between oil produced oil exporting nations and then we saw the covid 19 situation arising and lockdowns resulted in demand drying up so there are no takers of crude presently which is uh, the, even the crude oil which has been refined to hmm, processed so even for uh, refineries also it is seen product prices are less than the price of crude oil so they are in a peculiar situation there is reduction in demand and this will result in negative margins so that is why the uh, union minister of petroleum and natural gas has stated that uh, prices will not reduce and government will also benefit because government also gains huge in taxation on crude so it's he said government will use this for savings for welfare so we have seen earlier uh, oil prices in the country were quite low so they were uh, subsidized by the government but then subsidies were removed from fuel uh you know lpg subsidy has also been significantly reduced so all subsidies were removed by the government and now we see that prices are market linked but though they are market linked because subsidies removed means they should be linked to the market but still government did not reduce prices and the prices remain artificially high and the taxation amount uh, remains high too the next is karnataka government takes efforts to solve mystery over birthplace of purandar das so this is regarding purandar das who is who is hailed as a father figure of carnatic music so he had written various songs in kannada language he was of the haridas tradition and he was earlier a rich merchant named shrinivas nayak and since the term nayak was title given by attributed to local influential people during the vijayanagar period so he was uh, during the he was uh, contemporary during the vijayanagar rule so he actually is believed to be have have born in purandargar in maharashtra because his pen name was purandar vithal but then uh, people in malnad in karnataka say that he hailed from that region so to end, end the speculation here regarding his birthplace archaeological evidence is being used by karnataka government to, to solve this mystery so this is actually important from culture perspective we should know about purandar das a father figure of carnatic music and you can see he his compositions are mostly in kannad some are in sanskrit and his pen name was purandar vithal vithal is one of the incarnations of hindu god vishnu but then vithal is uh, main deity in maharashtra so that's why this uh, conflict arises purandar is also in purandarpur in maharashtra the next is in international labor organization urges pm not to dilute labor laws so ilo has informed trade unions in india that its director general has expressed concern and urged prime minister to send a clear message to central and state governments to uphold international labor laws after the recent dilution of law which is seen in some states so states like up madhya pradesh gujarat etc have either suspended large number of labor laws for 2 to 3 years or diluted them in an attempt to woo the industry in the midst of covid-19 pandemic so around 10 central trade unions had written to the international labor organization in geneva on may 14 seeking its intervention to protect workers and international labor standards in the country and ilo has written to prime minister and informed trade unions about the same now because india should uphold international labor laws so it is its duty as a and also we have seen already that how up government has actually revoked these labor laws uh, relaxations which were announced after a case filed in the courts and next is afghan government frees 100 taliban prisoners so afghan authorities released 100 taliban prisoners as part of government's effort to a surprise 3 day ceasefire which the insurgents marked uh, announced to uh, marking eid ul fitr festival three day cease fire means there were no fight no bombings and attacks seen and 
Taliban and Afghanistan government have to initiate talks too and uh, already US Taliban talks have taken place and it is said this is very important for Afghan's 19 year civil war to end. So plans of Afghan government is to release up to 2000 Taliban units. Presently it released 100 Taliban prisoners out of these and uh, already we have seen Taliban insisting that not just 2000 but all 5000 Taliban members who have been arrested by Afghan government should be released as per the deal with the US government that uh, a precondition to Afghan Taliban talks would be this release which has resulted in talks also becoming complicated so peace talks have to be uh, have to take place intra-Afghan peace talks between the government in power in Afghanistan President Ashraf Ghani and uh, Taliban. So when prisoners are being released and questions should be raised whether these are terrorists which are being released or if they are not terrorists then why were they in prison. Then next is Latin America is the new epicenter World Health Organization. So South America is the new epicenter of COVID-19 pandemic World Health Organization has declared as US President Donald Trump also intensified his push to reopen the reeling of American economy. So, number of deaths in America and number of COVID-19 cases in America are quite huge. There have been 96,000 deaths so far in USA, while it has registered 1.6 million COVID-19 cases. But then South America is the new epicenter now. Brazil leads here. Its death toll has been 21,000 and it has 3,30,000 infections. The third highest case load for any country in this pandemic. And deaths of Brazil, in Brazil, it is said, have been of younger people, like in Europe, America, we saw elderly being hardest hit, but in Brazil, it has been the younger people who are often driven by poverty to work despite the threat of infection. Also, um, in South America, another country, Peru, is also struggling with intense outbreak. It has more than 1,10,000 cases and 3,100 deaths. The next is... China warns U.S. of retaliation if punished for Hong Kong law. So, China has threatened a countermeasures against U.S. if it was punished for plans to impose a sedition law in Hong Kong. So, China is proposing, planning to have a sedition law in Hong Kong means this will be a new security law which will ban treason, subversion and sedition. So, there have been months of pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong in 2019 and now China plans a new security law here. It says this is to defeat terrorism. So, these are pro-democracy protests which take place in Hong Kong because of you know, curbs being imposed by China. So, US National Security Advisor has warned that if such a new law is passed, then the preferential US trading status is there on Hong Kong would be revoked and China has threatened countermeasures on this. So, we have seen even presently with the plans of a new security law, Hong Kongers, thousands of them took to the streets despite a ban on mass gatherings introduced to combat coronavirus. So, Hong Kong enjoys liberties which are not seen in mainland China. It has its own legal system, its own trade status. You should remember that it was under British rule and had been handed over to China in 1997. So, China has to provide more freedoms to the region, but it is rather working reverse and imposing restrictions here, taking away their democratic rights. So, US Department of Commerce also has uh, imposed sanctions on China already. So, this is in a separate case. Where, so, this shows how relations between US and China are strained. So, these were sanctions on Chinese government institute and eight companies which have been announced by U.S. Department of Commerce over alleged human rights violations in China by Chinese against Uyghurs and other minority groups in the restive Xinjiang region. So, you know, China is accused of mass repression of minorities, mostly Muslim minorities here. So, on this, U.S. has already imposed sanctions. The next is, China suggests shift in Belt and Road Initiative approach amidst debt concerns. So, China has hinted at a shift of how it will pursue its signature Belt and Road Initiative amidst growing concerns about debt repayment from many partner countries because of COVID-19 pandemic. So, Belt and Road Initiative is very important for the government. It has mentioned so that uh, it will focus now on quality of Belt and Road Initiative in its, uh, in its paper, its government work paper report. 
which is of the National People's Congress (NPC), which is China's parliament. So this is an, the most important policy document of China. And since 2018, Belt and Road Initiative has a dedicated subsection in this. So that shows the importance of BRI also for China. It has been also written into Communist Party of China's constitution in 2017. So it has a special status. In recent weeks, China has seen calls coming from various countries in Asia and Africa to delay or waive debt repayments. So in this, China provides grants and loans. 23% are grants. Rest are commercial loans at market or near market prices. So this is huge debt which China has provided to the various developing countries. It said world's debt of China has grown 10 times between 2000 and 2017. Developing countries owe 380 billion dollars to China. So now how they would repay is a concern on which China has uh, has been accommodative and says we'll we'll focus on quality now. We we'll have to see actually what further developments take place. And this is the Belt and Road Initiative, which is a huge infrastructure project. Uh, you know, so it is going to provide road as well as uh, sea route connectivity. So it has two aspects: Silk Road Economic Belt and Maritime Silk Road Initiative. You can see connecting China to as far as Europe and Africa. And last, you have. U.S. holds talks on conducting nuclear tests. So, U.S. President Donald Trump's administration has discussed holding first U.S. nuclear test since 1992 as a potential warning to Russia and China. But such a test would be a significant departure from U.S. defense policy and will dramatically increase uh, uh, nuclear war, nuclear arms race with other nuclear armed nations also uh, upping the ante. So, this may result in unprecedented nuclear arms race is clear. But this is also the election year in USA. US is suffering because of COVID-19 and Trump administration is criticized for its handling of the COVID-19 crisis on which part it has uh, laid the blame on China and has upped its ante there too and now going for a nuclear arms race. So, such uh, nuclear tests etc. are good politically. So, that is what is being seen in USA now. So, that is it. Thank you.